Well, we, of course, know a lot about the DNA of modern humans. We also know a lot about our cousins, the Neanderthals. People have been interested in Neanderthals since we, they were first discovered in the 1800s. Remember, a single femur and skull cap were found in Feldhopper Cave in Germany, and it actually took a long time for people to realize that it was a different species. There was a whole lot of um, ideas like, oh, it was, you know, this soldier who had rickets because the femur was curved or um, all of these different explanations. Um, and afterwards, there was a lot of, uh, you know, several reconstructions that showed the Neanderthals as like brutish. That's where kind of this idea of cavemen comes from. But really, Neanderthals are really cool. And we have so many fossils from them, partially because they are pretty recent, all things considered. So they're more likely to be preserved. And then in 1997, this paper came out. Um, so this is the um, humerus of Feldhofer 1, that original Neanderthal specimen. Yeah, they took a big chunk of bone out of the type specimen of Neanderthals. Normally, you don't sacrifice the type specimen of a species in quite this way. I do not condone this particular decision, but we did it. Um, so from this, we sequenced the first mitochondrial DNA from Neanderthals. And while it's really cool that we do have Neanderthal DNA, try it on something else first. Use a paratype, anything, anything but the holotype. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm ever going to get over this particular one. Let's maybe start talking about what we learned from them. Um, so from just the mitochondrial DNA, now we have a phylogenetic tree. So here are Neanderthals and here are modern humans. So this is a slightly later paper because now we have um, Neanderthal, the Feldhofer one, and Vindia, a different specimen. And you can see they group differently than modern humans. So this is where we got different um, papers coming out like this. Neanderthals were not our ancestors because they're grouping distinctly differently from modern humans. We're getting this idea that they are a distinct and separate species. Before this came out, there was actually a pretty healthy debate, like were Neanderthals a subspecies of our own species or not? Um, and this was part of the reason uh, that led everybody to fall pretty uh, firmly on the side that the modern humans and Neanderthals are different species. We can also compare um, the amount or the average amount of differences between different individuals. So you can see there's, you know, a certain number of differences on aver average between humans and chimps. So that's a great, um, you know, way to root our comparisons. Um, and there's a, you know, an average number of differences between all humans, because obviously we aren't all the same. And you can see the average number of differences between humans and Neanderthals falls somewhere in between. So we're, of course, more closely to Neand related to Neanderthals than we are to chimpanzees. But the average number of differences between a human and Neanderthal is more, and that falls outside the range of variation of the number of differences between humans on average. So this is pretty good evidence that, yeah, Neanderthals are a different species. Again, remember, we are only looking at mitochondrial DNA right now. Um, of course, since that original one, we've sequenced a couple different ones. Uh, so we have DNA from Neander Valley, LC Drone, Vindia, and now Ms. Muscaya. Um, and this allows us to get a better idea of what's going on. And then in 2020, 2010, now we are finally able to get a draft sequence of ne Neanderthal nuclear genome. And this led to some surprising results because before this, there was no evidence of interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans. And many people were hardline like, yeah, they're completely separate and they had no contribution to modern humans. But now with this draft sequence of the nuclear genome, the authors noticed that Neanderthals actually like share some similarities with modern people who don't live in Africa, but not modern Africans. So it was weird that they shared similarities with some groups of humans, but not others. And it was also more than just Europeans. Um, so what we think happened is there was a little 
little bit of interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans as our ancestors left Africa. So let's look at a, uh, our diagram here. We think there is a little bit of interbreeding right here. So you can see that interbreeding happened very early on. So some African lineages had already split off, but we did not see the differentiation of modern Europeans or Asians or Native Americans and, um, or you know uh, Polynesian Islanders either. Um, we can look at here on a map. So now we think where there's a little bit of interbreeding right outside of Africa. So probably somewhere in Saudi Arabia or the Levant re region. Um, we don't know for sure, but that's the <laughs> region that makes the most sense. It would have to happen at around 50,000 years ago, though, of course, the date that humans migrated out of um, Africa is also hotly debated. We are also finding some fossils that do appear to have, um, that are early modern humans that do have a recent Neanderthal ancestor. So ancient DNA is giving us a really cool insight into this. And with a full genome, we have been able to compare the Neanderthal genome to the modern human genome. And really, there's not that much differences. Sure, there are of course more differences between modern humans and Neanderthals than with just within modern humans, but there aren't many genes where we find these differences. So here are a few genes that um, relate to um, the uh, a protein reptin. We can find it in our skin in a couple different places. Um, so again, the protein melastin uh, uh, dealing with skin pigmentation. Um, so the Thata gene is associated with type two diabetes. Um, uh, Durka want, uh, A is critical for uh, Down syndrome. Then we have, uh, this other gene, NRG3, associated with schizophrenia. Um, and so a couple of these genes are actually related to mental disorders. And some people have uh, wondered exactly what's going on, on um, there. It's hard, it's hard to tell, like, maybe these genes helped us with our brain development, but they, you know, have these adverse effects related to um, mental disorders. Other people think we actually got some of these from Neanderthals. Um, but overall, like this is a pretty small number of genes when you consider how just how many genes we have in our body. Um, so most of the um, differences we see um, between modern humans and Neanderthals are really a matter of scale. So it's probably more dealing with the regulation of genes than changing the genes themselves. So what do we know about Neanderthals from their DNA? And what information do we get that's different from the mitochondrial versus the nuclear genome?